Welcome back, everybody, to Falcon Plays Neo Scavenger. We are here in the heart of the Depths of Cryogenics mod. Um, this will be our second little episode into this. Last time we started off after we, um, you know, got the ball rolling over here. But there's a lot to do still, so we're going to continue going forward in here today. Um, and also, more importantly, I mentioned this last episode. This is being recorded immediately after the last episode, but I am feeling a bit under the weather, so if I'm a bit nasally or if there's any cuts because I have to clear my throat, hopefully you understand why I'm just a little bit under the weather right now. Anyway, um, last time around, we got into the security offices, we pillaged through through two lockers, I should say, and we found some possibly actual hardcore drugs, because that guy had him hit him pretty well. But we found them, I'm not sure what they're used for just yet, I'm kind of worried to actually just take them straight up, so I'm going to hold off on that for a while. But we are not done in the security office, we still have to go through the CCTV monitors themselves, so let's get the ball rolling here. The flickering light of the screens draws your attention towards the security console. Curious to see how it did manage to survive, you approach to take a closer look. For the most part, the thing is ruined. Out of dozen or so LCD screens, most are dead and black. Some visibly damaged, no doubt, by the debris from the collapsing roof. Only two against all odds seem to be still working. Barely. One, responsible for the otherworldly illumination of the room, shows a constantly shifting wall of black and white static. The other one blinks randomly, as if a child was playing with it turning it constantly on and off. Neither one looks useful at all, however. The um, curious, if the thing can help you in any way, you proceed to strike some keys on the keyboard below the screens. Enter, escape, control, out, delete. <laughs> you gotta always go to control, out, delete, no? Something's going on with your computer, you can't really answer it. Control, out, delete, dog. That's, the, uh, that's the, basically the answer just about all of your big issues here. Followed by several random combinations, all to no effect. Trying to use the track balls, which once served as the controls for the cameras, as far as you can tell, proves similarly pointless. Looking underneath the, co the pulpit of the console is a dead end, too, since all the guts of the device are built into the wall. Other than proving that the facility is still powered somehow, the console is nothing more than a particularly annoying source of light. Luckily for us, we do have the electrician perk, so let's go ahead and use that right now. While the lack of feedback of the screens might be, quite obviously, a problem, a console like this serves as a hub to which many different security and maintenance subsystems are connected. Taking a look inside is the only way to determine if the whole thing really is useless after all. Now, with your expertise, you only need a proper tool to pop that beast open and take a look into its belly. And luckily for us, we were able to find some uh, multi-tools as well, which we could use as a screwdriver over here. This will take us a few hours as well. I will also admit, this part I have not done beforehand, so I'm not sure what to expect from this, um, what the outcome is going to be for this, by the way. So, I guess we'll use the one at 70 right now. Luckily, you have a screwdriver, the electrician's best friend, with you. Combining the tool with the know-how, you deal with the console's somewhat counterintuitive construction in no time, gaining a clear view at its inner workings. Just like you could have expected, most of its inner systems are either fried or simply broken for the time and lack of maintenance. After a longer evaluation, you manage to find two interesting things, however. First of all, the powering system is unusual. Normally, you would have expected it to be simply plugged into a socket into the wall somewhere, but, he, but here, power supply seems to be coming from under the floor. Power grid being situated underground explains, at least to some extent, why it hasn't failed yet. Second, more directly useful things come comes in a form of a still partially functional alarm system. The loudspeakers don't work and the console's connection is useless, but with the newly acquired understanding of the wiring and a few spare parts, you could easily make the warning lights blink in case, of anything, in case anything enters the facility. It might not stop any intruders, but it could give you a few precious seconds to prepare. Have you ever decided to spend a night here? Ooh. So we can kind of use this like a bit of an alarm system if we ever want to make this our base. And I guess there's really no reason not to if we could get the ventilation working and also get the lights up and running. Pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and um, find out here. We have the Gaija security system mechanics. Okay, cool. Confirm. The two surviving screens on this console continue to display static and flicker. I think that might be it, but let me go ahead and do another hour over here. Yeah, I think that might be it. These schematics are practically useless for anyone not interested in fixing the warning lamps over here, but just so you don't forget anything important, you spend some time copying the notes on the console's barely working electrical system on some old piece of paper. Which we did, because we have two of them now. Alrighty, so if we ever want to make this into our own little alarm system, we have that option as well. Player has worked on some easy tasks for an hour. And I think we're pretty much done with this. Let me give it one more try. Yeah, okay. 
I usually have to make sure that I'm not missing anything out over here. So I think we're done with the security office. Let's get on out of here. We've already checked the monitors out. Let's go back to the main hall. Alrighty, cool. So let's go into, we have staff room. We have cryo facility 14. We have the control room with the dog man marking over here. And we have the cryogenics lobby as well. Let's go into the, let's check out the staff room. Maybe we could find some useful stuff in there. You approach the door and mark the staff room, hoping to find something useful, like clothing or a bag at least, or a place to rest comfortably. To your great surprise, the doors are welded shut from the outside. It's beyond weird. Even though the facility suffered some damage here and there, everything can easily be blamed either on the years of abandonment or the strange creature you've encountered earlier. But this is deliberate, and no matter how you approach it, you can think of no viable way to get inside. Disheartened, you turn back. Really? Nothing at all, huh? Guess not. Guess I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Alrighty, stupid sexy falcon. All up in this, dog. <laughs> okay, let's not strain the voice here, Falcon. Not feeling too good. Alright, so I guess there's nothing to do in the staff room. Let's go into the cryo storage 14 chamber. From the markings of the plague by the entryway, you learn that this is the second cryo chamber on this floor, the other one being the one you woke up in. Seeing that the automatic doors are open and excited to see if there's anyone else in there, you approach the doorway quickly, only to be immediately forced back by... The insanely intense stench, it's gut-wrenching, disgusting, and immediately fear-inducing. No doubt about it, it's the smell of blood and raw flesh. Alrighty, now we're getting to somewhere. Uh, let's see. The air inside the facility is so still that you must have missed it walking through the corridor previously, probably passing the doorway too fast to notice. Now standing so close you can clearly smell it, just the way a slaughterhouse would smell. It's also really dark in there. Not totally pitch black, but really close. You stand still for a second that seems to last a lot longer than it should, but then relax a little. You're confident enough that there is absolutely no noise coming from the inside the dark room, still finding the need to vomit, both from the disgusting smell and the sudden anxiety attack. You need to decide how to proceed. So we could go in blindly, or we could use some lighting. I don't think we have to really um, <laughs> debate it here too much, right? Obviously, we'll use some lighting to see what's happening in here before we just walk in. Especially smell flesh and blood and raw, whatever. Now that you can see anything at all, uh, you slowly enter the room. Modern technology dispersing the darkness before you. I'm not sure how much modern technology you could really attribute to a lighter, but sure. The sight, just like the smell, is both frightening and disturbing. The room served as a lair of the beast you encountered before, no doubt about that. Whatever furnishing was in here is now completely destroyed. Its remains slashed into bits by powerful claws, all lie piled in the corner forming a sort of den, not unlike the dog bed in shape, only much larger. The six cryopods lined the walls, smashed and broken beyond repair. The fate of the people once occupying them, tragically clear. Oh, dude. So the dog man got in here, he saw the fucking six pods with people in them, he just tore them open and just ate them or some shit. Oh, that's... That's terrible, man. Can you imagine, like, going into, like, some cryo sleep and never waking up from it? I mean, that's always a possibility. Of course, we're talking, like, you know, sci-fi over here. This also re this reminds me a little bit of um, Demolition Man with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. Amazing movie, mind you. Let me tell you. Demolition Man is quite possibly one of the most underrated fucking sci-fi movies of all time. Not many people talk about it. It's a really, really good movie. It's, it's kind of silly at times. I mean, obviously, it's Wesley Snipes and Sly Stallone. You know these guys are going to have fun with this type of movie, but it was a really, really good underrated sci-fi film. I think it even had Dennis Leary, had Sandra Bullock before she got big. Yeah, man, it was a good movie. It had a lot of good, actually, good actors, now that I think about it. Anyway, the only thing in here that has not been shredded to bits is a large metal cabinet. It has moved and placed in a worryingly intelligent act against a broken window leading outside, blocking the light and the cold wind from directly affecting the insides of the den while at the same time leaving enough space for the creature to come and go as it needed. Wow, so the dogmen are actually kind of smart. Interesting. It takes a second closer. It takes a second closer. Look for your brain to process the, by far, most disgusting and terrifying detail in here. The remains of the monster's victims, and the room is filled with those. The floor is covered with the dark stains and bits and pieces of bone and meat in various states of decay. Some are small chunks, some are as large as a football. Most seem to be animal remains, but some, like the severed hand in the middle of the room, are obviously human. Alrighty, once again you're at contemplating entering the darkness of the cryo chamber 14, which smells of blood and corpses. Uh, let's see if we could do some... Let's check out the window, I guess. Knowing the outline of the room, you approach the blocked out window. 
Even up close, barely any light gets through it. It's basically identical to the one in the room you woke up in, the frame larger enough for a person to easily go through it, and the glass broken allowing that passage. Unlike it, however, it was partially blocked from the inside, by a metal closet and it is badly overgrown from the outside by the dense bushes. Trying to move in or out, you would end up all cut up in the thorny plants and bagged down in a narrow passage. Unless you're a super strong, thick furred beast. <laughs> I, I guess it could be, I have a dog man skin fur coat on, you know? I mean, I'm up close to it. Plus, I could kick their ass whenever I feel like it too, so there's that. It really makes you uncomfortable to remember the savage beast that lived here and think just how well thought out that setup is, yeah? That's kind of creepy, actually. Uh, let me just do one more check, same thing, and let's do one more search of the room. Feeling a bit more ready this time, knowing what waits inside, you decide to go through the ruined room more thoroughly. Though most of the furniture is in shreds, you doubt the beast was intentionally destroying things around it, so there is still a chance you'll find something useful in here. Taking a quick sweep across the grass, stinking the breeze, you end up disappointed. The creature damaged everything to such an extent that nothing here looks even remotely useful. While at it, you decide to move the rotten remains aside, outside. While a disgusting task, you are afraid that leaving them here may cause some problems down the line, like drowning, like drawing more wild creatures in. Good idea. You found something. Oh, you mean the human remains spoiled? Yeah, I don't think we want to do anything with those, my friend. Not unless we have the Wendigo um, disease going on over here. So that's about it, right? Yeah. Check the window, and we're done here. Okay, so. Um, we have taken care of um, all these, right? No, no, we have to go to the control room. We were at Cryo Storage 14, so we have this and this to go through. Alrighty, so let's go to the control room now. The automatic doors to the control room for this level of the facility stand right before you, closed. The console on the right looks badly damaged. What appears to be claw marks go right through the thing, rendering it useless. Similar marks scar the surrounding wall, but not the doors themselves, suggesting a vicious attack by a very large, very angry beast. Maybe the console annoyed the creature somehow? Made sounds or blinked lights? Whatever the case for the furious attack might have been, the thing is busted. You will need a good old-fashioned leverage in order to get inside. Luckily for us, we have our crowbar. Putting your thrusty crowbar to use, you strain against the corroded old plate of metal. The sweat is soon running down your face as you try to your best to make the blasted thing budge, even just a little. And just as you feel your strength starts to leave you, the door makes a very loud metallic screech bringing you close to a heart attack. Then, it let go. One more shove with your shoulder opens it enough to grant you comfortably entry inside. The room is very dusty and eerily illuminated by the blue light coming from the monitors on a series of consoles that are lining most of its walls. Most of them seem to be turned off, but there are a few still online. The biggest screen on a desk standing in the middle of the wall, directly opposite to the entrance, shows the flickering plan of this level of the facility along the company logo in some sort of error message. So, we have search the room, take a closer look at the main console, or just go back. So let's uh, start off by searching the room here first. As it has already become sort of habit for you, you take a walk around the room, quickly scanning your surroundings for anything even remotely useful. Unfortunately, there is very little in here other than the consoles themselves. Several squeaky office chairs and a small coffee table. The single filing cabinet tucked into a corner is similarly empty. All vital documentation shipped off-site during the excavation, evacuation, no doubt. Alright, so nothing in the room for us, and then we have a closer look at the main console. Now, if I'm right, this right here is what the update was all about. I'm pretty sure if you check this out, the game would freeze up on you. So we got the update, hopefully it doesn't freeze up. Because that would be a pisser, because I would have to do everything all over again. So, let's go ahead and, um, get in here. Seeing the plan of the facility finally gives you a complete idea of how this place really looks. The circular construction and the corridor going around made it a bit hard, you have to admit. So it's nice to finally have a reference point in your head. You also notice that you can easily read the logo of the company. And even though it consists simply of the word Gaiges in Greek, it still surprises you that you actually recognize the letters. It looks like you can read multiple languages. Hey, who would have guessed? And you can see that right here. And this is how the layout actually is of the facility. Alrighty, good job, Calvin. I like that. Uh, the rest of the news isn't good enough, though. As expected, most of the console's functions do not work correctly. Whatever you choose to press on the touchscreen, some, some sort of unable to connect or data corrupted error message pops up. Some functions simply refuse to do anything at all. Still, through trail and error, you do manage to get a few snippets of information anyway. Most importantly... While you cannot gain access to the maps of the remaining floors, you at least found a list of them. 
Level 0, we have the lobby and security and the CC 15 and 14. Uh, underground, uh, level negative 1, we have CC 13 to 10. And 2, we have 9 to 6. 9 to 6. 3, we have 5 to 2. And 4, we have special CC 1. Level 5, we have the administration room. And then number 6, we have the power to the entire facility itself. So there's a lot more in here that you initially expected. Six underground floors, some more to be precise. You cannot lie. That does not sound... That does sound impressive. <laughs> to tell you, that doesn't sound impressive, really? I think that's really impressive, my friend. Uh, other than that, you can access data of all the patients from this floor, or at least the not-yet-corrupted part of it. There's also a semi-functional diagnostic tool available, which confirms your suspicions that the facility is powered by its own generator of some sorts, which is running absolutely fine, even though it is now operating in emergency CC support mode, whatever that means. Also, a control is flashing, warning that someone needs to change the light bulb in the men's toilet. Oh, you know, priorities, right? So, the Bucky's console's limited functions are at your command. We have check the available patient data, or we could also browse through the security footage. This might be interesting. Let's check this out. Uh, while none of the CCTV cameras are functioning anymore, according to the logs you managed to locate, there are hours upon hours of arch archived raw security footage on those drives. You could quite literally spend weeks sitting by this chair, staring at the screen, and there would still be more to watch. What's complicating the matters even more? A lot of these files are corrupted, and the great number of drives containing them are either missing, broken, or encrypted, especially the older ones. It's a mess that could take a whole CSI team a month to unravel. And let's see. So we can actually watch some fragmented security footage, huh? For an hour. Let's give it a try. Why not? Well, you might as well get on with it. Taking a sit in the surprisingly comfy office chair, you choose a random part of the footage and hit play. Player has worked on some easy tasks for an hour. Okay. The footage comes from a camera looking out into the parking lot in front of the facility. It has a lot less overgrown back then, but that is as much as info as you can get. Though you fast forward through a lot of it, the footage shows nothing but a slowly changing time of day and the distant trees moving on the wind in a melancholic fashion. Alright, can we do another hour? Sure, why not? Alright, so we hit play. Mm, is it the same thing? Yeah, same one. Let's do another hour. Mm, same one indeed, alrighty. So I'll go up to like five hours and if nothing happens, well, I think we... Okay, here we go. It's a footage section from a camera located outside at the back of the building. There is a lawn there back then, already a bit overgrown, but still not the wild bush growing there today. You spend a lot of time fast-forwarding the footage of the grass growing. It's so monotonous that when suddenly something finally jumps into view, you, finally, you get really startled. Sadly for you, it's just a deer coming near the building nervously, trying to easily, accessibly, fresh-looking grass. Okay. Well, I don't think we're going to find anything over here. I mean, knowing Kevin, I'm getting a bit thirsty now. Mm, same one. Like, I feel there's probably more to this, but maybe there isn't. Players aren't able to see well in these conditions. It's probably dark now. And I'm actually really, really tired now, too. And it's going to be the same deer thing again, isn't it? Mm, yeah, deer again. Alrighty. Let's um, play some more with the main console over here. Let's check out the available patient data. You gain access to the data of all the people cryo suspended on this floor of the facility. Access to the data of potential patients on the other levels is unfortunately not available from here. So um, let's go check out the patient stuff from 14, which is where... 14 was where the Wolfman... Or was it 15? I think 14 was where the, where the Wolfman basically devoured everything in there. There's a problem loading this data as the archives seem to be partially corrupted. Tank number one, Jake Thompson. Committed 2018-924. Uh, let's see, he's got his emergency contacts and billing information. Tank number three has no um, data, loading error. Number four had Ronald Ruel, who was committed in 2012. And tank number five has another error. Is that it? Yeah. What about 15? That's where we came from. Uh, we have Anton Blubber, committed in 2012. Uh, that's us right there, number five, Philip Kindred. No data whatsoever, we have to find out on our own, but we have our little um, billing information account at the Detroit Savings Bank, which we'll probably go, uh, end up undertaking at some point in this run. We'll probably go back to DMC and probably get the quest underway over there. And that's about it, huh? Okay. So, not much of information or value here, it does seem. Mmm, go back. We're really tired, so let's consider starting to get some rest over here. As a matter of fact, let's do that right now. Let's, um, 
but I think we have to go to... Oh, we have a lobby here. Let's go out to the lobby. Let's go out. What's that? Uh... <laughs> not, not yet. Uh, I want to get some rest here before we do anything else. Here we go. Uh, main hall. I just want to go to the cryo facility. Let's leave here for a second. Let's see if we can get the the facility up and running too, huh? The known rest because we do have the the thing to set up the lights over here too. Let's see. Where would this one be at? Would this be a recipe over here as well or no? Mmm, ten and tea. Broken bottle. Crew torch. You guys see it? Don't see it myself, but we do have the recipe for at least the this over here. So pliers, oh, we need the electrical panel, which we don't have in here. We'd have to go inside to actually use that, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've ever fixed the electrical panel before. I'll be honest with you, I don't think I've ever done that. We might have to be inside for that one. Well, that's all right. What I really wanted to do right now is just, oh, here we go, available campsites. So we could do that and then move this into our sharp edge pliers, mechanical parts. I got gotcha. you. So... You come over here, we need a sharp edge, we need the pliers as well. Pliers would be these guys, mechanical parts over here, we need a sharp edge as well. Where are my shards at? And we're missing one more thing in here, electrician skill, right? You know, the important part. There we go! And we have the light fixture, everything's done, do it. Alrighty, we now have some lighting as well. <laughs> cool, light fixture. And what does this do for us out of curiosity, I, I wonder? Well, I guess it probably gives us more shelter. Artificial light, you can easily see, even at night. Cool. So, we have that. That's a Naptic. I really want to get this active. This is not going to be heated, unfortunately, but so be it. I just want to get some resto for now. So, let's go ahead and grab our bag over here. And do a little camping trip. Our alertness is going to be really high. We'll be hanging out in here. Shelter could be a little bit better, but it'll probably do for now. And that's all we really need right now. Also drink some water here. I'm getting kind of thirsty again. How's our food situation? This is at 52.5. 52.5 still? Okay. Let's go ahead and get some sleep here right now. Hopefully that creature's friends and family doesn't come back to kill me at night. So we woke up. We are still kind of tired, though. And it's nighttime, so we might as well get a bit more rest, too. So go for it. There we go. Woke up yet again. Still nighttime. Get some more sleep, dog. It's all fine. Stop tripping out. Alrighty, good. Daytime. We're completely rested. Thirsty. A little bit hungry as well. We could probably have one of these now, I suppose. The ones over here finally got went spoiled as well. Ah, uh, Cornicola. How's our temperature doing? I'm comfortable. Well, let me have a Cornicola here for once. Sweating now, see? Telling you, that's what I, this guy like. Who who gets who reacts this badly to Coca Cola or like any sort of like you no know, soda drink in general? Like I usually have. I'm never like I never have like a sip. I'm like, oh god damn, dude, I'm dying. I'm just sweating my ass off right now. Like who does that? That's like an immediate reaction to it. Unless he's probably like really allergic to it or something. Um, whatever. That's what happens. It's the reason why I usually ignore it myself. So we'll have some regular water over here. We'll probably go out and get some more water after we're done in this area anyway. We are still, however, uh, burdened. So all the extra meat that we're carrying is at least um, bringing us down here a little bit. Uh, let me have this one. That's fine. We're no longer unburdened now. Or we're no longer burdened, I should say. We're unburdened, I should say, honestly. And we'll have some water over here. Good. We have all our five moves back. But we still have a few more things to do in the facility, right? We have to go to the lobby. So we will wrap it up here today. We'll come back next episode. We'll wrap up the lobby and we'll head back out into our trip here. What I want to do is after we're done with the lobby, which is going to be really quickly, I'm pretty sure, we'll probably start heading north and I want to go to the Wana Shaba Shaba Boom Bow Bow Wow Camp. And um, probably sell some stuff over there and hopefully try to get some good items from the um, the people who I just mentioned. I'm not going to say the name again. Once enough. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a like to support us a lot. I will catch you next time.